Welcome one to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's Bram Stoker's Dracula, brought to us by Sony ImageSoft. Bram Stoker's Dracula, based on the novel and film from 1992, was released on a plethora of home systems. Almost every console of the time got a version of this game. This version of the game is a pretty simple action platformer with three different difficulties, and depending upon which difficulty you play on, you'll end up having more levels, so to see the entire game, you have to play on the hardest difficulty setting. As we begin the game, we're going to go down to difficulty and go over to hard. You can also change up the controls if you want to switch what jump button and attack buttons are. And then jump into the game with the first scene during the daytime. The game is broken up into several levels, each one having a day and then nighttime sequence, with the nighttime ones having a boss at the end of them. We're going to start off by heading up here, and when you jump in the air, if you hold down on the D-pad, you'll do a stomp, which can destroy certain platforms, and you're going to need to do this in order to make your way through. You have a few different weapon types that you'll be able to use, including axes and rocks that you can use as projectiles, but you have a limited amount of them. You still do have a normal move in your disposal that you're able to do, but it's a very short-range swiping-like attack, so it's much better and preferable to use some of the projectiles. The health that you have in the lower left corner does carry over between the stages, so if you end up being low on health going between levels, you'll start off the next stage with relatively low health. In this stage, we're going to head up on the top portion and work our way over to the right. You'll notice question mark blocks, which are very similar to Super Mario Brothers, that contain a variety of different items for us to use. Over here, though, is the first boss encounter. It's Dracula's shadow that basically attacks us. He goes into the shadow area and then either goes to the top portion or stays on the bottom. If he's on the bottom, you can kind of see him ahead of time, as the very bottom of the shadow peeks underneath the black shading that's on the right side. A lot of times I'll just guess and fire out an attack about when he would end up spawning so I can kind of get a jump on whether or not he's there. It's very easy though to just jump between the two platforms and keep attacking. You don't want to stay on a platform too long, basically hit once, maybe twice if you have enough time, and then quickly get out of the way, either by ducking and hitting jump in order to drop down, or by just jumping straight up. Once he's defeated though, we're moving on to scene 2 during the daytime. Now we're inside of Castle Dracula. Start off by jumping to this platform and then jumping in front of the switch in the background. This will activate this platform over to the right that you can then ride up to the next part. The switch in the background is a bit difficult to see, and if you don't know that you have to jump in front of it to hit it, it can be a little bit difficult to figure out. Continue along this platform, watching out for all the lava down below, and you're going to do a couple of platforms up here. Then you're going to wait for the spikes to retract so that you're able to run through the very small corridors during this part. You can destroy and break open a couple of boxes along the way if you want to do so. Duck underneath the spikes while riding across this platform and you'll get up to the top part, ride across a couple of more platforms and lava and you'll make it to the end of the first part of the stage. As soon as the next level begins, we're going to grab an axe throwing item from the first box and then work our way to the right watching out for some bats, as well as these guys with guns that will fire out. Pretty easy to dodge them overall, and sometimes they're in bad places and end up just attacking a wall in front of them. Over here to the far right, when you make it to these rocks, we're going to do the stomp in order to break through them and head on down to the next section. It can be difficult to dodge the first enemy that spawns because you really don't have a lot of time to react to it. Just to the left, we're going to activate the switch and then jump on this platform, and after a few seconds, it will start moving up and down across the water so we're able to get across safely. Over here, we have our first encounter with the Bride. The Bride shows up in a bunch of the levels throughout the game, and basically all you have to do is just avoid her. 
All you need to do is just jump over and make sure she doesn't run into you. She only has a few different paths that she's able to take each time that she spawns, so it's usually easy to get an idea of where she's about to go and be prepared for it. You have a bunch of these encounters throughout the game, though they do change up a little bit, with sometimes two brides that you have to deal with, as well as increased speed and a few more sporadic patterns, but for the most part, those segments are relatively easy. After you dodge enough, though, you'll be able to continue on the level. We're gonna head down here, break open this box to grab a heart so we can replenish some of our health or add to our health bar, and then continue riding the platform over to the right. Defeat as many of these bats as you can before running into here for the next boss battle. We're gonna grab these rocks and then duck in front of the boss here who ends up appearing and after a few seconds he'll send out two projectiles, one on the left and one on the right side which is easily able to be ducked underneath. After he does that he will start to do this move that pulls you towards him. Just be ready to start running the opposite way of him so that you don't end up getting pulled towards him and lose health. If you run out of rocks it can sometimes be difficult to jump over him to grab more of the projectiles. I prefer to stay on the left side if possible because it seems the rocks spawn more on that side, but it is random. Now that part of the game would actually be the end if you were playing on the easy difficulty, but now we're going to actually move to the next level since we're on hard and go throughout escaping Dracula's castle. So we're going to start off by making our way to the right, riding down a platform, and then safely drop down here watching out for the spikes, and then drop down to the platform below so that you're able to ride safely across the lava. Once you've done that, continue over to the right end of this platform and do the stop technique in order to break open the blocks and get over here. Run to the far right, watching out for spikes, climbing up and hitting the switch before then retracting and going back to this little platform where you can now ride it up like an elevator to the top section here. You have to make a pretty high jump and time it well so that you're able to easily get up to the next platform and then wait for some spikes to track before going to the next little set of jumps to finish up the level. Onwards to the night version of scene 3, start off by climbing up, waiting for the spikes, and then jump on the platforms to avoid all the acid that is brewing below. Drop down through this opening, you will land safely on a platform, but you need to jump off of it quickly to avoid the ghosts as well as the platform and not falling into the acid. After a couple of small jumps and more ghosts in our way, we're going to break open using a stomp ability. Be sure to hit the switch so that you can activate this platform. It'll go up and then wait for it to come back down and do ride it that way. Don't drop down the opening because it'll just drop you straight into acid below. Over here to the right is the next time where we have to deal with the bride. There's two of them this time around, but it's the same patterns as the first time, just with two of them. So you just have to time your jumps accordingly and you do end up floating for quite a bit with your jumps. So you have plenty of time to hang up in the air and be able to avoid their attacks. Continue along the next segment, break open the rocks on the left or right side, either way it takes you down to this platform. Go across a series of platforms that will fall into the acid after a few seconds so you don't have much time, but it's still pretty easy to get across. Watch out for more spikes in the wall and then you have plenty of spikes that will be waiting for you in the next little segment. You have ones in pits and ones on platforms that you'll have to avoid. But if you have a good amount of health like I do, I'm just going to take a little bit of damage from the spikes and just get to the boss battle a little quicker. For this boss, you have this dog-like entity that ends up appearing and running across the screen back and forth. That's all that it does. It's very easy to hit it with one of your projectiles and then quickly jump over it. You have plenty of time to do this with the axes or with the rocks. Either way, you'll be able to easily hit it and dodge it. Very easy battle and once it's defeated, we're moving on to the next level.
As level number four begins, run over to the right and you're going to ride down this platform to the small little corridor. Run over to the right and then be sure to watch out for the spikes lining the ceilings and the walls during these next couple of hallways. Thankfully the area opens up a little bit and you'll hit this lantern which does work as a checkpoint marker in case you're wondering what they do. And we're going to drop down, watch out for the spikes and continue on over to the left side. When you drop down, you'll have a choice of going left or right. We're going to head over to the right with a couple of jumps over some lava before ending the next scene. As the next level begins, you have a good amount of enemies running around, but we're able to easily take them out with projectiles or just jump and avoid their attacks. And this includes the dog-like ones that are sitting there throwing out a few projectiles towards you. Break open the block before dropping down. Be sure that the spikes are retracted so that you're able to then run through the opening in the wall and make it to the right side here. Break open the floor and then run to the left. Here you have another segment against the bride. Similar to the first one, just she's a bit faster this time around. But all you're going to be doing is doing your jumps to avoid her very easily dodgeable patterns, and then we'll be able to continue on the level. After that encounter is over, head to the left, be sure not to run face first into the spikes, and then jump up to the platform in the upper right corner. It moves pretty slowly, but you need this in order to get up to a platform on the left side that contains a switch that we need to hit. Once we finally do make it there, you can hit the box to get an item, as well as hit that switch in the background so that you're able to then ride the elevator up to the next area. This next section has a couple of enemies to worry about, including these hands that pop out of the walls, just move slowly throughout so you don't end up getting hit, as well as a couple of little spiders that are walking across the ground. At the end of the segment, you'll have a couple of platforms to jump between while watching out for the water below before hitting a lantern and going through into the next boss. Now for this boss, it's another Dracula encounter. It's very similar to the one we dealt with before, except now he throws out four projectiles. Still very easy to duck underneath of the projectiles and continue hitting them and then getting away from them as soon as he starts doing his magnetic-like move to pull you towards him. Pretty much the same strategy you used the first time, you're just going to use again here and once he's defeated, we're moving on to the next level. As the next level begins, we're going to run past these spikes and then jump onto this platform, which will start to right across the lava. On the right side, you'll then be able to jump up a couple of different platforms to get up to the next little section. You'll have to wait a few moments sometimes for the spikes to retract and then do a couple of quick jumps up these platforms, and then be sure to hit the switch and you can hit a lantern on the right side. After doing that, head to the left, you'll have to make a couple of jumps on the platforms on the lava before making it to this platform, which will ride over to the left and then upwards to the next section. Here you have another one of those dogs that shoots projectiles, as well as bats and spiders that are going to try to get in your way before you finish up the level. As the next section begins, watch out for the skulls above dropping little fireballs, as well as lava and other enemies before making it over to the right. You'll drop down and you'll quickly have to jump off the platform before it falls down into the lava. And here is a little bit tricky. You have to use the one platform to get over to the left, but I'm just going to jump on it and get up to this corner where I can ride across this platform. You have to be careful here though because the skulls above will still drop fireballs so you want to make sure that they drop in between where you're standing so you don't end up getting knocked off the platform. Drop down here, ride the platform across a little bit, taking out a couple of ghosts. On the bottom section you can run to the left and hit the lantern if you want to before then going in here to take on another one of those bride scenes. Now this one's a little bit trickier because of the patterns being changed up but it's still very much 
the same kind of ordeal we've been dealing with before. After that encounter is done, continue over to the right. We're going to break open the floor a couple of times. There's a lot of ghosts here, so you may want to take them out with your weapon and projectile. We're then going to continue over to the left, watching out for some more spikes, ghosts, and breaking open the floor again. When you make it this segment, what you need to do is break open the one set of blocks, and then this platform can go to the right. You can then use the other platforms to kind of manipulate your way around until eventually getting to this platform and all the way to the right where you have to break open a lot of blocks as you fall down. There are ghosts during this segment which will try to hit you, so time your stomps accordingly, take them out if you need to. Once you drop down all the way, run over to the left side and after a couple more jumps and enemies, you'll hit a lantern and make it to the boss. Now, for this boss, we're going to jump up in the air and hit him. He's basically a bat version of himself hanging upside down, trying to attack us with other bats. The strategy is you can jump up and attack him, and when the bats start coming your way, quickly run underneath them to the right side, or the opposite side. This will allow the bats to kind of go away from you, eventually disappearing, but giving you plenty of opportunity to jump all the way up into the air in order to deliver a projectile attack to the bat form. Once he's defeated, though, we're moving on to scene 6. The final two scenes of the game, 6 and 7, are once again in Transylvania and in Dracula's Castle, so almost identical as far as location is concerned to the earliest levels in the game, though the designs of the stages are changed up a bit. Break open the block and head down to this segment. You'll have to wait, of course, for spikes to retract. You can head over to the right to hit the lantern if you want to do so, but your main goal is to continue going to the left, where you're going to break open the ground potentially again, or just go all the way over to the left and then drop down the far edge. Either way, you'll make your way down to this segment where you'll have to jump over a couple of pools of water before avoiding some more spikes and another platform which will rise upwards. There's one last fireball to worry about, but then you're going to head to the right and finish up Scene 6 Daytime. For the next segment, start off by climbing up a series of platforms. There's the zombie-like enemies on them. When you make it to this one, you can then run to the right. You'll have a bunch of these little platforms in the air, and you can take this path if you want to. There's a couple of ways to get through this little area. But we're going to take the upper path, as it's just the easiest to kind of get through the stage. Be sure to drop down here. You can hit a, another one of the lanterns for a checkpoint, and then hit the switch in order to make it over to the right and drop on down here, which will lead us to another one of the encounters against the bride. This one's a little bit more of an open area, but the patterns and what you're doing is pretty much identical. Just keep avoiding her attacks before eventually she gives up and we'll be able to continue. During the next segment of the level, start off by hitting the lantern for another checkpoint and then avoid a whole bunch of bats. You can jump towards the left wall here, even though it doesn't look like you can, you can actually go through it, which will take you to the next area. You're going to hit this platform, which will then start to move, and you have to keep up with it, ducking a few times in order to watch out for some spikes, before eventually coming to a nice safe landing on the far left. You're then going to do it very similarly to the next platform, once again ducking to make sure that you don't end up getting hit and drop down into the water below. Avoid a couple of spikes and a bat before riding across a giant gap. Of course, if you fall down that, you will end up dying. Hit the lantern and then run to the right some more for the rematch against the shadow version of Dracula. This battle is pretty much identical to the one we did at the very beginning of the game. In fact, it may be almost exactly identical. Just keep attacking him every time he ends up spawning and drop down or jump up, depending upon where he's coming from, so that you're able to not get run into. It'll take a little bit of time, of course, to deliver enough attacks to defeat him, but once he is defeated, we're moving on to Scene 7.
Scene 7 is the final scene of the game, and we start off, of course, in the daytime segment, running over to the right, watching out for some lava, and then dropping down, and then doing pretty much the opposite, just going to the left, but this time watching out for spikes instead of lava. Break open the floor and then drop on down, wait for the spikes to retract as you make your way through the small corridor. Once you drop down, be sure to hit this block and you're gonna fall down. If you time it right, you can avoid the spikes, but if you don't feel like waiting, the spikes thankfully won't instantly kill you or anything, uh, but you will take a little bit of damage. Be sure to go down to the left side and hit the switch before then going to the right where you can get to this platform and finish up the stage and move on to the final level of the game. Scene 7, Nighttime, is the final stage. It starts off with a couple of gun guys trying to shoot at us before we make it to the right, and we're going to break open a whole lot of stones before we end up falling down to the bottom section. There's a couple of ghosts that will immediately attack you. Jump over to the left through the wall, and this is important because this is where the switch is located that we need to hit in order to make our way over and through the next segment below because it drops this platform here. Without hitting that switch, you won't be able to use that platform and thus get through the next segment. When you drop down here, you'll now have two more of the Brides, the final encounter against the Bride, but what you're going to be doing is the exact same as we've always been doing. Just keep jumping over, this time there's two of them, but the pattern is once again pretty simple, you have a pretty floaty jump, and once she's finally gone, we can move on the level. Once she does finally go away, we're going to be going through a little shortcut to get to the boss very quickly. Go over to the right, break open this floor, but then hold right on the D-pad when you drop. You're going to go through the wall, and when you come to a dead end, you want to jump and hit left on the D-pad, because you'll land here and get right to the boss fight, so you don't have to do a little bit more running around. The boss, the final boss of the game, is pretty simple. He appears in a couple of locations above you, and he will fire out a set of projectiles to go out in four ways, similar to the other version of Dracula we battled earlier, where he was just staying on the ground, except this time he's floating, but it's still pretty easy to hang out underneath of him and easily dodge his attacks. Just jump up every so often in order to deliver attacks safely, and then make sure you're on the ground underneath of him, or just to the left or right of him, so that you avoid his oncoming onslaught. Once he is defeated, though, you get to sit back and enjoy the ending to Bram Stoker's Dracula on the NES. And what an ending it truly was. So there you guys go, that is Bram Stoker's Dracula for the NES. This version is very similar to the one that was also on the Nintendo Game Boy, though the other console versions like Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis was a very different game, and still not one that I end up liking all that much, but better than this NES counterpart. As you can see, the NES version is just an okay platformer, and while some of the music in the game is pretty good, that one track in particular is of course very infamous for being bad, and rightfully so. It's an absolute ear sore to have to listen to that thing more than a couple of times when working through the game. After the credits finish up, it'll then go back to the main menu where you can start the game all over again. But with that, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.